You are listening to James O'Brien on LBC on a day when... Do you know, I mean, you think you've seen it all before, don't you? Uh, what do they say? There's nothing new under the sun. Or if you hang around lo- long enough, everything comes back into fashion. I don't know. I, and and I've, I've been, you know, in this job or, or my previous jobs uh, for quite a long time now. And, and I've witnessed some fairly some fairly rum shenanigans, if, you, if you'd allow me to turn into... Uh, a PG Woodhouse character just for a moment. There's some very rum shenanigans going on there, Jeeves. Uh, but this story is absolutely breath. I'm, no, I'm going to go in early. Sorry. If you've been paying attention this week, you'll know what word I'm trying to excise from my vocabulary or at least reduce, but sometimes it's the only word that will do. This story is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, Conservative MP, or or suspended Conservative MP, technically I suppose he's no longer an MP, called Mark Menzies, who hadn't troubled the score as much previously. God, I have turned into a PG Woodhouse character. Where did that phrase come? Hadn't troubled the score as much. Hadn't troubled the score as much previously. Stands accused of, I I mean, all manner of misdemeanours and misbehaviours. And uh, what's most remarkable about it is that the scandal has been known to the party bigwigs who've been trying to turn Angela Rayner's 10-year-old sale of a council house, the ex-council house, that may have involved um, the failure to pay one or two thousand pounds in, in, in capital gains tax. They have been trying to inflate that great big nothing burger on a daily basis with the help of client media, of course, all the client journalists queuing up to make a fool of themselves again in exactly the same way they did over Keir Starmer's curry, while knowing that a, a, a Tory MP was was literally caught up in what can only be described in the finest of tabloid traditions as a drugs and rent boy scandal. It's even, did you know, it's even got an immigration angle. And, and the immigration angle is, according to the Daily Mirror, um, and I, 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 I presume this headline uh, uh, supports the story that follows, but according to the Daily Mirror, Tory MP's rent boy lover was in Britain illegally after being refused entry three times. Mark Menzies under pressure to reveal what he knew about Brazilian male prostitute uh, Rogerio Santos's immigration status. So it's even got an immigration angle, this story. But, of course, if, if you consume some corners, if you rely upon some corners of the UK media for your political news, you will know next to nothing about this and everything about a house that Angela Rayner sold in 2013, I think, was it? No, 2015, uh, on which she may or may not have been due to pay some capital gains tax that she probably didn't know about, and even if she was due to pay it, as Matthew Parris, the former Conservative MP, wrote in the House of Commons yesterday, uh, in the in the uh, Times newspaper yesterday, it would be a, an absolute heap of beans, an absolute nothing burger. Anyway, seven minutes after ten. So here's my problem, and I don't expect you to feel unduly sorry for me, but I can't I can't get a phone in out of this. How do you get the how do you get a phone in out of a drugs and rent boy scandal? I could talk about it for the best part of half an hour. I could fill you in on all the grisly details, but at the end of that, I don't think that a question sometimes you may have noticed this during our time together. Sometimes I I do start thinking that this isn't a phone in. I don't normally start at 10 o'clock thinking that this isn't a phone in, but I might introduce something into the conversation a little later. And think to myself, well, I'll just share my thoughts on this, but I don't think it's going to be one of those stories where I invite you to, to share yours. But I, 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 I can't. And usually, sometimes I get to the end of my own contemplations and explanations, and I find unexpectedly that a, a helpful question, a felicitous invitation to you to ring in, has presented itself, has popped up unexpectedly. I can't see it happening with this. I mean, not least it is still largely in the realms of allegation, although allegations considered serious enough to prompt a suspension. Um, the misusing, I mean, the, the, I will, I, I have to. But listen, this isn't, we're going to do a phone in about how hard it is to get hold of medicine. Okay, so hold on to your horses for that. He, he, it's the middle of the night. I mean, he, the Times have written it up like a, like, a, like a sort of, like a John le Carre novel. The phone call came in the dead of night. Can't normally write that in a news story. 
the dead of night. That's like something from, from fiction, isn't it? No one says the dead of night in real life. So you don't sort of phone your mum, do you, in the dead of night? Or, 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 or oh, I caught the night bus. I caught the night bus home last night. Really? What time? Oh, it was the dead of night. It was the dead of... So that they've let the time. The times have let their journalist, Billy Kemba, who's done a banging job on this, to coin a technical term. Um, they've let him loose with the old uh, lyrical <laughs> liberties. The phone call came in the dead of night. Are you on your own? The man said with urgency in his voice. Again, you never put that in a news story. This is on page 12 of the Times. Yeah, I think I am going to be talking about this for a while. So um, apologies if you were waiting for a more traditional phone-in. The phone call came in the dead of night. This is also my audition for doing other audio books. I've done my own audio book, which features a few accents, or, or at least attempts at, at, at slightly mickey-taking interpretations of public figures' voices, but I haven't done one straight like I could do a, you know. The phone call came in the dead of night. Are you on your own? The man said with urgency in his voice. I've got in with some bad people and they've got me locked in a flat and they want £5,000 to release me. I've never heard Mark Medzi's voice. He probably sounds like Jacob Rees-Mogg, but that just seemed to, fit the, that seemed to fit the text that we are examining at the moment. The caller was Mark Menzies, 52, the Conservative MP for Fylde in Lancashire and a government trade envoy. Now, I, I, well, I, I am a great fan, as you know, of full disclosure. Not just the podcast, but the practice. So I should tell you, I don't like Filed. Filed routinely rob Kidderminster Harriers of both glory, victory, goals and players. So I've got a bit of a bee in my bonnet about Filed. They have over the last few years become something of a, of a rival, an arch rival to Kidderminster Harriers. So I do want to get that front and centre in case I allow it to influence my coverage of this story involving the current MP for Fylde. Um, I like that uh, from Jamie. He asks, was it a dark and stormy night, James? I mean, they could almost have opened with that line. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to, I'm going to slightly embellish the Times coverage of this story. It was a dark and stormy night. And the phone call came in the dead of it. Are you on your own? The man said with urgency in his voice, I've got in with some bad people and they've got me locked in a flat and they want £5,000 to release me. The caller was Mark Menzies, 52, the Conservative MP for Fylde in Lancashire and a government trade envoy. Where is he a government trade envoy for? What do they think about this? I remember when they made Dominic Kavczynski the government trade envoy for Outer Mongolia. You think I'm joking, but I'm not. Uh, just as an indication of how much the world turns, Dominic Kuczynski went to one of those weird NatCon conferences once and he got told off by the party leadership for knocking about with weirdos and crypto fascists. And, and, and these days, former cabinet ministers can go along to it without Rishi Sunak being prepared to say boo to a goose. He had rung his 78-year-old former campaign manager. This is at half past three in the morning. A woman whom the Times is not naming waking her in the night and asking her to hand over thousands of pounds from a bank account containing donations to the MP's campaign. There's two pages of this, so rest assured I'll be moving on at quarter past. But the allegations that follow, and the Times have clearly done their homework on this, involve the money being stumped up by a, a, a constituency office manager who told friends that she'd cashed in her ISA to get hold of it. By then, the sum had risen to £6,500. Later that day, having been rescued from the flat, the Times reports today, Menzies rang the woman again and told her he'd summoned one of his staffers to London to collect him from the flat, and on arrival, the junior staffer handed over his own money, thought to be a few hundred pounds, which Menzies said he owed to two other men. After, asked if he was... I'm reading this from the Times newspaper, not from, I don't know, a Jilly Cooper novel. Asked if he was concerned he could be blackmailed again. Menzies said he'd change his phone number. And the following day, on another call, he said he needed another £35,000 for medical bills. And when he was told there was no more money in the campaign funds bank account from which... Um, some of this cash would, would, would subsequently be secured. He, he replied, apparently, oh, we'll raise some more. 
A source close to Menzies said the MP had met a man on an online dating website and gone to their flat before going with another man to a second address where he continued drinking. It was falsely claimed that he had been sick at one point and several people at the address then demanded £5,000, claiming it was for cleaning up and other expenses. The source said Menzies decided to pay them because he was scared of what would happen otherwise but didn't have the funds to transfer the money from his own savings and his aides gave him money, quotes, as friends who wanted to help. And and on it goes, on it goes, on it goes. But of course, the, the big political story at the moment is the fact that in 2015, uh, Angela Rayner sold a former council flat, uh, uh, upon which point she may have been responsible for about 1,500 quid in capital gains tax. That is the indicator of... And you know why that story is in the news? In fact, I'm going to play you a little clip of the bloke who is responsible for this story being in the news. I am not really in a position to criticise people for many things. Having an enormous forehead is one of them. I am overly blessed in that department. Oddly, it's not as disproportionate as it used to be. I think my body has caught up with my head as the years have passed. But as a young boy, I was nicknamed Mekon, not always affectionately, by some of my peers. And, and, and therefore, I shouldn't really be one to throw stones in a glass house. But this bloke's head, is, this bloke's forehead, is, is almost as big as his embarrassment in the following clip from Sky News. I, I, I'll play you that, and then we'll have a little rest, and then I'll decide what we're going to do next. Are you, are you still with me at the back? Good. So this is the bloke who is responsible for reinflating the Angela Rayner nothing burger and getting the police involved to the point where I read that there are currently 12 officers investigating the offences that James Daly has brought to the uh, authorities' attention. So who better than James Daly to tell us exactly what the alleged offences are? And of course, as a deputy chairman of the Conservative Party one has to presume that he would be party to this story about Mark Menzies. You, I, I presume that that is a significant enough position to be in the room where it happens. So when they're talking about how desperate they are to keep this story away from the news, uh, to keep Mark Menzies away from, well, not to put too fine a point on it, illegal immigrant rent boys, uh, that, that, that he would be part of those conversations. So, you know, he is the man. He is your man. He is your go-to guy for finding out about the allegations against Angela Rayner because he is the man who has made them. Greater Manchester Police should be able to look into these allegations in the way that they think is appropriate. What are the allegations? No I don't understand I, why, you won't, why, we, why you're, you're not comfortable saying Well, we clearly, have a different, we, we clearly have a different point of view. The, the allegations or the, the, uh, the matters that are being investigated are with the Greater Manchester Police. Well, at least no one would have the uh, front to try to respond to questions about Mark Menzies by bringing Angela Rayner into it. I'm not ready to the... He's so it takes the Times, secretary. it takes the newspaper then to actually bring this investigation to some kind of conclusion. That's well, the reality, often, isn't it? Uh, in a, in a, you know, quite often it is a, a journalist who uh, uncovers a wrongdoing. It, it seems to have been what's happened in the case of Angela Rayner as well with the... Um, but, the home. All right. Uh, okay. I hear that. Well. But, but, but quite but, often, but, the journalists but, are, the, are the answer to that. 